recently, someone asked me the question of which one was harder? Was it harder for me to bounce back after a devastating divorce or was it harder to build my business? It took me a second. I had to like pause and hold clutch my pearls because I was like, which one was harder? I think that they're both very different, but I honestly, I think that building my business was the hardest. Welcome back to another episode. I am super excited that you are here watching me on YouTube. And if you are not subscribed on my YouTube channel, you should be. So that way you can get all the things, however you want to get all the Kenya things. And so thank you so much for being here and for sharing and always just being the highlight of my day. You know, like, honestly, when I first wrote down the topic, I was like, oh yeah, three things, like, you know, my, my, my business, the, whatever, the hardest part of building my business, ah, it's gonna be fine. But you guys know I'm honest, I'm transparent. I don't like to just do cookie cutter, fluffy stuff. And when I was writing down those three things, I said, oh man, let's be honest. I was like, oh, these are three really, really, really hard things. And so I want to get into that today. And my prayer is that... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my prayer is that when you hear what my three things are, that they don't scare you away from entrepreneurship. Good thing, good. But my hope is that it actually gives you some encouragement of that everybody is in whatever places that they are in and we're all learning and growing and evolving. And so it gives you the permission to be learning, growing, and evolving. Okay, <laughs> so these three are not in any particular order, but they are where they are. So the, one of the first things that I wish I knew before I started my business, wait, back up. That wasn't even the title. The hardest part about building my business, no, that that's not even the title of the broadcast. <laughs> The title of the broadcast is three things I wish I knew before I started my business. But anyway, as you guys, this, this is funny. Anyway, okay, let's go ahead and get into it. So one of the first things that I wrote down was about launch fatigue. Now, have you ever heard that phrase launch fatigue? I had never heard of it. To put it in basic terms is that when you are launching a product or service and the launch is over with, like... I didn't know that people crash. A lot of times people just crash after a launch because of launch fatigue. And I remember the first time I ever did a launch is when I launched my, my brand, my website, and I was going to, to making $10,000 my first month. That was the goal. And I was doing all the things. I was staying, waking up early. I was staying up late. I mean, I was doing all the things, working with all the people, working nonstop and doing live streams, building my email list connecting, oh, just doing all the things. And I remember after we launched, after that launch week was over with, I felt incredibly depressed. Now I'm not talking about the regular, like, you know, we say, oh, I feel depressed and I'm not making fun of people that battle with depression. I have overcome depression. So this is not me saying, you know what I'm saying? Making light of it. Okay. But you know how sometimes we'll say, oh, I feel depressed. And we actually just feel sad. This wasn't one of those things. This was like, I could barely get out of bed. This was one of those things where I was just like, no matter what I listened to, no matter happy dance, happy. It, I could not get out of it. And I remember, I think it was like day two or day three of this when I said, maybe I should just chill. And so I just took two days off and did nothing. And then the weekend came and I did nothing over the weekend. And then I just felt better. And I was just like, oh, huh, that's really interesting. And it took me a couple of years when I watched a bunch of other people launch and somebody, a girl named Courtney, had posted in a Facebook group about launch fatigue. And I was like, what? And it, it hit me that, that I don't know a whole lot about the body. I'm learning about the body, but it's like your, um, I don't know what the word is for, but it's like you're building, 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 building. And so you got all this like energy, all this stuff. It's like building. You guys know what that word is. If you know what the word is, you can comment it here on YouTube. And then when it's over with, it's just like crash. So it's kind of like when someone's been like, um, doing like a tour to France or they're doing this big marathon. And then like when it's all over with, they're like, if they don't get back into their routine and some, in some facet that they just crash. And so that's what happens with people when they have a, a launch, you know, that you can literally crash if you're not doing things in between the time of your launch, if you're just going too hard. And it took me a while to realize this. That's why like we have our course, Monetize the Talk. And I started to learn healthier ways to offer that to our audience. Cause I was just 
just like, I am exhausted. At the end of my challenges, it was just so exhausting. And I just said, one, I can't do this to my team. And I was just like, I can't even imagine how they feel at the end of a launch. And I'm like, I don't want that for me. And I don't want that for them. And so if you're somebody and you do live launches, like you do challenges or webinars leading up to a product launch or whatever, it's really important for you to build in time during that launch to do nothing, to go get a massage, to like sleep a little bit extra. And then giving your time after that to like do nothing. A lot of my friends, what I see them do, a lot of times they go on vacation and I'm like, oh, they take these three-day vacations to like Mexico or whatever, but they just take time off and they give their team time off so that everybody can recuperate. And I think that that's awesome. I think it's brilliant. You know, I'm in a place now where I'm asking myself, how can I give my team a day after a launch too? Like how, how, how do people do it? How can I give that to them too? Because if I feel that way, and I can only imagine how they feel, because they've got to give me all the things that I need. And if anything is changing at the drop of a dime, I'm like, come on, come on, come on, come on, you know? So that can be tough, but that's number one. And number two is how scary it is to grow in your business. I always thought that, okay, I'm at 250, 300, 400,000 in my business, it's going to be easy to go from 400 to over a million in a year. I don't mean like cumulative over the years, but like from zero to a million cumulative in a 12 month time frame. I thought that would just be easy. Oh my God, that is not easy. What so Ever. And one of the reasons why it's not so easy is because not just the things that you have to do, but as the owner of the company, when it was just me and like a contractor who was per project, not like on an hourly basis, part-time or full-time, when it was just like per project, not that big of a deal because I know I, I, I pay a thousand dollars for this and that's that. But when you really want to grow your business, you're hiring people like regular part-time, regular full-time. You bring on a full-time assistant. You bring on a full-time graphic designer or full-time whatever. And that's a lot of pressure. I didn't realize how scary I was going to feel when it was time to grow. <laughs> it took me a while to do this, but one day I finally said, what are my regular monthly expenses? I made a list of all the things that I paid for on a monthly basis. And I looked at that number and I was just like, <laughs> I was in shock of how much money comes out of my business account every single month. And I had this moment where I said, stop everything, fire everybody, let go of everything. Because I said, I could be out of business in however many months. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I was like, this could be the end of me. That was so scary to see that number. And there was no way around the fact that here is this number and here's how much money is coming out every single month. Here's how much money has to come in every single month just to break even. But here's how much money has to come in every single month. And we're going to constantly make more money to add to what we already have into the bank. Yeah. Like, Ah, even now when I think about it, I'm just like, wow, that's just like so scary. And I remember I had a conversation with my sister. Like she never really understood what I do in my business. And finally one day she said, so tell me about your business. How's everything going? I said, well, it's really scary right now. And she said, why? And I was like, well, I have these, these many expenses coming out every single month and people are relying on me to help them pay their bills. Now we have money, but it's still very scary when you have that on your shoulders versus just you having a job or you having your own expenses. But when other people are relying on you, it's a whole different ball game. And she was just like, I never even thought about that, that you have people relying on you that can pay their bills. And I'm like, yeah, that's my life. And it just hit me over and over again of how scary that that is. But no, don't get me wrong. It's still a beautiful thing. It's like beautiful experience to have, to be able to have people that work with you and all the things, but it's very, 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 very scary. And it's something that I want you to understand. It's something that I want you to prepare for that knowing how much money needs to come into your business right now, how much money is going out, and then all the other things on top of it, okay? And then I also want you to, to think about if you bring on another person, how much is that coming out of your bottom line every month, every quarter, every whatever, right? So like just recently I was like, okay, what if I did four brand deals a month 
month and I got these much money for a brand deal. Okay. That's going to pay for those expenses. And so that's just another way of like going, okay, I've got these mega, mega expenses and here's how I can cover that. That's just me and my strategic mind trying to like make sure that, <laughs> that I don't feel certain pressures because it's like, it's a lot when you have the pressure on you to, to build your business. And the third and final thing that I wish that I knew before I started my business is that how much I needed to grow in order to lead people and in order to lead my company. Oh my God. Remember that, uh, that song? Oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. Has nothing to do with this conversation, but that's what I just thought about. Anyway, when I think about like how much I needed to grow or need to grow, it is very like, I can't say that it's overwhelming, but it has been like, oh my God, I'm not as awesome as I think that I am. I'm not as the greatest leader as I think that I am because not only do I have to run my business, sell my products and services and serve my clients, but I've got to mentor the people that work for me. I've got to learn their love languages and as people, as employees, I've got to understand their cultures, you know, what's happening in their countries. I've got to learn how to, what is their encouragement style? Like, do are they someone that wants money or do they want praise privately, public praise? Is it words? Is it gifts? Or what is their thing? I have to learn how to manage my emotions, especially when I'm hormonal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, catch myself. I've got to like not have uh, meetings with people or not text people or, you know, like um, send messages on Slack when I'm feeling upset. Like there's just so much stuff when it pertained to me having to learn and grow as a person. I was like, I just want to throw the whole business away because it's so much. It was so much when I looked at myself and my ability to communicate how I was feeling, communicate what I need in a way that each person could receive it. Like one graphic designer needs this, a video editor needs this, a chat bot person needs this. Everybody is different. My capacity has been stretched by 45 million times. And I wish that I knew the level of stretching that I was gonna have to go through. I wish that I knew more as an employee. I wish that I spent more time learning when I was in school, when I was working for bosses, I wish that I just knew so much more than I know now. Now I don't regret it. You know, I'm not going to throw my business away. I am going to always keep going, but this is just how I feel and felt. You know what I mean? It's been beautiful. It's been beautifully awful. If I can be honest, beautifully awful. So beautiful and awful all at the same time. But when I look back at my ability to watch a person go from deflated to encouraged, when I watch a team member go from on the brink of losing their jobs to rocking it because I learned how to encourage them. I learned how to motivate them. I learned how to help them mature in their position. It's everything, you know, because I'm like, this is not the last time I'm going to manage people. If and when I choose to have kids, like I've got, I will have a little person or if I adopt someone and the kid is a little bit older, it's like, I'm going to be coming into this person's life wherever they are. And I've got to learn to like navigate that. Not to mention, you know, my desire is to get remarried. And so I'm like, I'm going to have to navigate getting to know this dude. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know that this man and like when he's having his positive and not so positive moments, when I'm having my positive and not so positive moments, when we're having what the church calls heated fellowship, <laughs> you know, when I'm in those moments, having to learn how to like handle myself and all those types of things is crucial. I honestly wish that I knew all this before I started my business, but I'm, I'm proud of myself that I'm on the journey and that I'm figuring it out. And I'm glad that I have people on my team and in my company company in communities that I'm in that are like, okay, we're going to be here with you. We're going to encourage you. We're going to tell us what you need. How we, can we support you? I'm glad that I have those people around me because it could get very lonely. It could get overwhelming and it could just cause a person to quit. But I'm learning that if I am honest and vulnerable with the people around me, then I can get more of what it is that I need, you know, and I can learn better how to support my people. So like I have posted a, uh, a post on Facebook and said, you guys are leading companies, leading teams in different countries. How are you keeping up morale and doing all this stuff when they're on Zoom? And the fact that I was so honest and transparent with my question, I got so many people that gave me so many responses, so many good 
responses. And I was just like, things I never would have thought of, but because I was aware that I did not know what I was doing in certain regards and was honest and transparent enough to ask it on social media, I was able to get those answers. I want that for everybody else. I want everybody else to have those experiences. And so that's why I'm sharing this today on on the podcast and on YouTube, because I want you to go, okay, like, I'm just like Kenya. I don't know what I'm doing either in some regards, but I can, I can figure it out and I can go to people and I can ask people and I can be public or private about it and I can go and get the things that I need and I can become better and I can grow and all the things. So I hope you have enjoyed me outing myself on this episode and I sound drunk when I was talking in the beginning about whatever I was talking about, but clearly it's like midday. So ain't nobody drinking and I don't even drink. Uh, But I hope that me sharing my experiences, my growth moments, time, like centuries uh, with you. Uh, the century, what's the century? Is it a hundred, right? Obviously not, not decade. <laughs> Me sharing my decade of growth, growing moments with you. Hope you appreciate them. I hope that you always enjoy any time that we share a podcast episode or that we're here on YouTube. To listen to the Kia Kelly podcast, just visit any podcast player out there, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. We are everywhere.